Politics can be a nasty, brutal, and dirty business, but a San Diego group hopes to restore civility to civil dialogue. The second annual Civility Conference gets underway tomorrow. Joining me to talk about the event is Carl Luna, political science professor at Mesa College, and Martha Barnett, co-host of Public Radio's Away With Words. Welcome, guys. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you. So what's, what's the big idea, guys? I mean, is there a problem with communication in politics? Dwayne, have you been watching the news? Have you been listening to the radio? Uh, yes, I have. In fact, I've probably <laughs> been involved in that process to some. Now, you know that's a facetious question, but uh, I mean, I still ask it just the same. I mean, is there a problem that, that we can um, fix by changing how we speak, how we come across? What? Well, one, there's definitely a problem. You go back to the 1970s, the sorts of things that are on talk radio and on cable news were the stuff of parody. Patty Chesky's network, uh, Saturday Night Live doing riffs on it. Now it's day, day in and day out, constant demonization of other people, of other ideas, dividing us up. And there is something we can do about it. We can recognize there's an issue going on, get a dialogue going amongst people. It's a, you know, it's a long-term process to try to change the zeitgeist of the time, if you will, but I think people are tired of gridlock, they're tired of non-responsive government, and they're beginning to recognize how we're talking at each other is keeping us from talking with each other. Hmm, that's an uh, interesting point. Now, this is the second year you're putting on this civility uh, conference. What was the impetus uh, last year, and, and how did it go? Well, it came out of the 2010 elections and how negative the commentary was and gridlock in America and a general feeling maybe we're going too far with calling this person a fascist and this person a communist. So we held our first event. We had uh, over 100 people attending and it invigorated us to continue our process. We would like to get onto people's social radar that how you say things, how you conduct yourself publicly, does matter. That if you're working as we the people toward common decisions, you got to respect the other guy a little bit because he's an American like you. Yeah, I always think about consensus. You wanted to say something, Mark. Well, I was thinking about etymology, of course. The word oh. civility goes back to the Latin civilitatis, which has to do with the art of government. And it's related to all these other words like citizen and city and civic. And so if we're recognizing each other's citizenship, if we can take a moment and do that, I think it could help us at least try to see past the stereotypes and the the very very uh, the name calling the fascist versus uh, versus uh, communist the socialist yeah. you name it yeah when you boil conversation down to right that right winger you, left winger yeah you're you're going to be at a standstill when you're digging your heels in and what we need to do is create a more civic dialogue more civil dialogue that that moves the country forward together what i'm thinking about is uh, whatever happened to the agree to disagree um, to, to move forward, right? We may not agree on how to get it done or uh, what caused it, but we do agree that we both have to uh, come to a consensus uh, and move forward uh, for the sake of the people, for the sake of the city, for the sake of the state, right? Well, in 1960, John Kennedy could say, Republicans and Democrats both want what's best for America. The question is how you do it. That broke down in the 90s. We ended into a blood sport politics, my side versus your side, talk radio and the rest helped to reinforce that. And that goodwill concepts kind of disappeared. Bottom line, our entire system of government is based on consensus and compromise. When you can't reach the middle ground, it falls apart. Now polls showed over the last 10 years, the public didn't want consensus. They wanted our side to win. Since 2010 though, the polls are starting to change. A majority now says, they wouldn't mind to see a little bit of compromise going on. And if that grows, the only way you're gonna reach compromise is to be a little bit more civil with each other and respect both sides. Uh, uh, we the people means everybody's a winner. I mean, it's the Oprah Winfrey School where you get something <laughs> and you get something. Me winning and you losing is not the way our government's supposed to work. All right, right, let's. Uh, we've got about a minute here. Martha, you're one of the panelists uh, mm -hmm. on the um, conference tomorrow. What is it, what's your brief message uh, to those that will attend? Well, my brief message is a version of what I'm always saying, that words are powerful. They, they can be used to divide us, to unite us, to celebrate somebody, to demean somebody, and we need to pay attention to that. Language is like clothing, you know, and, and I think that if you're a little bit more elevated in your speech when you're talking about these kinds of issues, I think that has an effect not only on you, but the person who's listening to you as well. I'd like to think so. Yeah, and I like to think that public uh, television and radio is more civil 
than a lot of the other things that we see out there. So we're kind of an example, right? Most certainly. Martha Barnett, Carl Luna, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, here's uh, more information on the second annual Civility Conference. Uh, it runs from 8 until noon tomorrow at USD's Joan Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice. By the way, it's free and open to the public.